What's going on everybody? It's Leroy. Welcome back to Pokemon Crystal Version. And in the last episode, we defeated the fourth gym leader, Morty, and we got the Fog Badge, which allowed us to use Surf outside of battle. And while I was surfing around, we actually hatched our Odd Egg into an Elekid. And I let you guys nickname my Elekid, and I went with Blackout, thanks to the pitcher from the Mets, Zach Wheeler, and his awesome comments. Um, Elekid starts off with Dizzy Punch, Quick Attack, and Leer, but I also tacked on Ice Punch, which is a TM you can get in Goldenrod City, um, which is where I came anyways to the Name Raider. Um, but yeah, Elekid's a pretty fast Pokemon with pretty good attacking stats, but it's only at level 5, so I have a lot of work to do to get him up to par with the rest of my team. But while I'm down here in Goldenrod, let me quickly, um, grab an item that I forgot about. Yeah, there's someone pointed out in the comments, and now I feel bad that I didn't screenshot that person's comment, but there is a rare candy that you can find here in the tree. Um, and I'm not even going to be using these rare candies, but rather I'll probably sell them at the mart, because um, you can get some decent cash for them. But yeah, with that said guys, let's make our way back to Ecruteak City so we can get started with this video. After you get your fourth gym badge and the HM for Surf, the game really opens up in terms of what you can do next. It's a bit of a choose your own adventure. Um, there are three different gym badges you can go after at this point. You can head to the west where you'll go through Olivine City to Cyanwood City and you can either fight the fifth gym leader Chuck or the sixth gym leader Jasmine. So a lot of stuff to do there on the west side. Um, you can also go to the east which is going to go through towards Mahogany Town where you'll fight the gym leader Price. So I'm actually going to opt to go towards uh, Mahogany Town. This is not the traditional route that most people take, but since I have this level 5 Elekid on my team, I want to make sure I can grab the item, the experienced share, to help him get caught up in levels. Let me grab this Ultra Ball up here really quick. Um, but yeah, you can get the ex you can get the experienced share by going to the Mahogany Town end, so that's what I'm going to do, guys. So right off the bat here, let's just hop into the water um, with Surf, hop on our... Poliwag Lapras, and let's spray some Repel. I'll probably end up using all these Repels because we have a lot of work to do with some caves and stuff. There is a hidden Max Potion right here on this little rock. Yeah, that suspicious rock that's just sitting there right in the middle of the water. Um, and yeah, you can make your way to land here. Um, if you have Cut on you, um, I guess I'm not even going to pick up these items, but whatever. They're, they're just a bunch of Apricorns or whatever that you can bring to... Azalea and turn into custom Pokeballs, which I'm not really interested in doing. So, um, really quick while I'm here, let's grab this item. And that's a super potion right there. Um, I made sure to go into the mart and sell off a bunch of my items because it's really easy to run out of bag space in this game, so I had to clear up a bunch of space. Anyways, this little entrance right here um, is surrounded by water. You're going to need Waterfall to fu fully explore, so for right now, just head down this ladder. And we're basically going to do a big circle around this area down here, because there's some really nice items we can pick up. Um, no trainers in this area. Um, but yeah, Mount Mortar. Did I even mention that I'm in Mount Mortar? This is the cave that separates Mahogany Town from Ecruteak City. Um, yeah, just a bunch of items, not a whole lot to do here. When you have strength, you can explore it in a little bit more depth. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep spreading repels. I don't want to run into wild Pokemon. This is where you can find Meryl in the game. And there's a Hyper Potion for you. Um, you can find Meryl by surfing around in the water, so that's a brand new water type, if you're interested. And you can also find Machop on land here in Mount Mortar. Um, up here you can grab yourself a Max Ether. And yeah, a lot of these items I'll probably never even... I mean, you just have such limited bag space that it's... You can't hold on to all these items, but a lot of these items like Max Ethers, Max Potions, Hyper Potions, they're a little bit overpowered for this point in the game, so you can just sell them for a lot of money if you want. Now, this little area up to the left here, that is going to lead to the Strength portion, and we don't have the HM for Strength yet, so instead we'll just surf down here, over to this little plot of land, and here's a PP up, which I'll probably save for Fire Blast later on. And this has kind of completed the whole circle here. You can see the ladder that we started in. So there's only one more item that I want to grab, and it's way over on the left end here. And I think it's one of those items that permanently boosts up your stats. 
And I've been using those, you know, HP ups and stuff. I've been using them on Elekid. Um, ooh, and my repels effect wore off. Can I make it? The last few steps without running into a wild Pokemon. Fingers crossed. Yes, we did it. Let's go. And we got a Carbos, which is going to raise our speed stat. And yeah, I'll, I'll kind of designate these items for Elekid. Because when you attach, when you hatch your odd egg, um, and you don't get a shiny, you actually kind of by default get bottom of the barrel stats from your baby Pokemon. Um, so yeah, let me dig out of here with Roosevelt. Because I don't want to backtrack without my repel. Um, but yeah, in other words, this Elekid is about as weak of an Elekid as you can find, given that it hatched from the odd egg. So I'm going to kind of try to remedy that by giving it, you know, proteins, carbos, calcium, all those, um, permanent stat boosting items I can find. And alright gang, let's go ahead and surf on over to this side. Um, this whole area is kind of broken up into three sections, but... Oh, and let me spray my repel really quick. Almost forgot about that, and... I wish I had bought... I always short myself on repels, I just need to buy like 99 of them. Um, I'm gonna come back and fight these trainers a little bit later. Let's get back on this end of Mount Mordor, because this will... Uh, connect back to the initial cave that we saw at the very beginning of the route and oh before I go in here grab this hidden hyper potion it's just sitting there right on the rock waiting for you to grab it um, there are some deeper portions of Mount Mortar that you need strength if you saw that boulder back there um, but for now we can just go get some free items like this ether right here which you can use to restore some power points might be handy a little bit later on and this um, entrance here, this will just lead you back to the very beginning of the route. So if you want to go back to Ecruteek really quickly for whatever reason, that's where you would go. Um, my repels effect wore off. I need to start finding some super repels. I think we'll get those in Olivine City a little bit later on. Um, anyhow, let's go ahead and skip past this dude because there's just one item um, down here. And it's a revive, so yeah, the rest of the items in this cave, we're gonna need strength to um, go ahead and grab. So yeah, that's it. Let's just move on and start fighting these trainers. Starting with this guy. I'm not losing this time! Oh, sounds like this guy's on a bad losing streak or something. Um, so, yeah, first fight of the battle, we got Pokemaniac Miller, and this guy's got a pretty sweet team. He's got a Nido King, and I believe he pairs it with a Nido Queen, so... Yeah, you actually could have done this training prior to the gym, because you can actually access this portion without Surf. Um, you can make it all the way to Mahogany without Surf, so you might find that some of these trainers have kind of lower level Pokémon, and that's mainly because you had the option to fight them a little bit earlier in the game. And one more Surf should finish this thing off. And yeah, surf kind of takes a long time, maybe I don't need to use it when there's just a few hit points left. I'll spare the Nido King the the suffering. Um, but yeah, Swirly's doing pretty well here, got a bunch of experience, and will of course stick around for Nido Queen. Um, someone pointed out in the comments that I corrected my pronunciation, because I always called these things Nido King and Nido Queen growing up, and now I guess I've just heard it enough times from y'all that I've corrected it to Nido King, Nido Queen. Um, but whatever, we all have our own pronunciations for Pokemon and stuff, it's like... These are games we played as little kids, so, you know, it's not like we all knew how to spell it back then. I remember when I first started playing, um, Swirtly Level 23, by the way, uh, when I first started playing, you kind of had to watch the TV shows to really figure out how to pronounce the names of them. And this guy's pretty mad that he lost to a kid. Um, pretty funny. The losing streak continues for him. But yeah, that's gonna do it for Mount Mortar. Um, it seems intimidating, but if you guys kind of follow my steps there, it's really not too hard to quickly grab all the items. Um, yeah, not too intimidating. If you go too deep in, you might get lost, but we don't even have strength yet, so there's not a whole lot more to do. Um, but yeah, out here, let's go ahead and fight this guy. Hey, he says, this is my secret place. Get lost, you outsider. Bro, how are you going to call this your secret place? There's, I can see one guy in this screenshot right now. Uh, but anyways, we got another Pokemaniac. It's Pokemaniac Shane. And, oh, look at this nerd. He's got a knit arena. Yeah, you don't even have a Nido Queen. You should be asking your other Pokemaniac friend where you found all those Moonstones. Um, but actually what's funny about this is that uh, Nidorina and Nidorino um, are only poison types, so they're actually not weak to Surf. And when they're uh, evolved into their fullest form, they gain the ground typing, so... 
in a rare instance, um, the Nidorina can actually take the hit just as well as the Nido Queen. And of course, I got the critical hit there on the headbutt to finish it off. But yeah, he um, he's gonna wrap things up with a Nidorino. That is just hilarious that you fight the king and the queen, and then you just go find this guy outside the cave. Um, but yeah, we'll go with another surf here. Um, but yeah, Swirly's on a tear right here. Um, level 25 is when Poliwag evolves into Poliwhirl, so who knows, if we keep it up, we might actually get there in this video. Um, one headbutt will finish this dude off. And yeah, that'll do it. So, Swirly is pretty close to level 24. And that's gonna do it for Pokemaniac Shane. And he even admits it, I should have used the Moonstone. Um, alrighty then, so, really quickly, let's go ahead and fight this dude. It's good to be outside, I feel so free. Yeah, except you're in his secret space, dude, you gotta get out of here. Um, alright, we got one last hiker out here, it's Hiker Benjamin. And he's got a Diglett, so, yeah, Poliwag should have no problem cleaning up this team right here. Um, let me go with the Surf. So, yeah. Mahogany Town, we, we're basically there, we just have a couple more trainers to fight. Technically, Mahogany Town has the 7th um, gym, um, but you can really go in whatever order you want, which I really like about this portion of the game. You kind of have the freedom to do it however you please. And we have a Doug Trio up next, this should help us get pretty close to level 25 in the evolution. Um, but yeah, I think that fighting the Gym Leader Price might be a little bit easier for me than fighting the Gym Leader Chuck, because I don't have a huge advantage over fighting types right now. I don't have Flying, I don't have Psychic, I actually have a few Pokemon that are weak to fighting, so it might be better for me to go face Price first and clean up this whole half of um, the storyline before I go down there to Cyanwood City. So yeah, one more Surf will finish off this Geodude. I was maybe a little too bit optimistic about getting to level 25 here, but uh, yeah, that should finish the job. And uh, that'll do it for Hiker Benjamin. Alright. And he's just gonna laugh. That's what hikers do, they just laugh when, when you beat them. Um, there's one last guy over here. This might actually be the most important guy on the route, so you want to make sure you talk to him. And I am actually gonna retire Poliwag for a second here because this dude has a Quillfish on his team. Quillfish is kind of a weird Pokemon to deal with. It's a um, it's a water and a poison type, so I think Roosevelt, my Teddy Ursa, is probably my best bet. And I am having a real hard time clicking the right buttons here. Okay, switch you to the top. I'm not used to having these two field moves there. That's distracting, but... Anyway, let me demonstrate the power of the Pokemon I caught. And yeah, he's talking about his Quillfish, which is a pretty weird Pokemon. I always thought, um, it looks so weak, but it's actually got some pretty good defense. And that water poison typing is kind of obscure, it makes it hard to find the right moves to dish out damage on it. Um, but you can go with a Thunder Punch. Oh, and he's got Minimize, I hate this move, but I do have Feint Attack, which never misses, so that would actually be the perfect time to whip it out if I need it. But it looks like I'm gonna land the Thunder Punch anyway. Um, whoa, and we got a critical hit! Yeah, I probably actually might have needed it, who knows. Um, but yeah, that's gonna get Roosevelt nearly up to level 24. And, like I said guys, it's very important that you fight Fisherman Tully because he is gonna be the third guy in this game that will um, offer out his phone number and he's gonna give you a call when he finds an item. And this is the dude that will find the Water Stone for you. So we already found the Fire Stone, we found the Leaf Stone. If you give Fisherman Tully your phone number, um, he will eventually call you. He will call you with all kinds of nonsense for a while, but eventually he will say that he found the Water Stone. And who knows, that's even an item we could think about using um, when our Poliwag evolves into Poliwhirl. So guys, uh, that's basically going to wrap things up for this video. Um, there is some grass down here. Um, really not a whole lot that we haven't seen. This is where you would find Machop in Gold version. But they got rid of that in Crystal, so... Um, or sorry, Mankey. This is where they got rid of uh, Mankey, which was in Gold version. Which is too bad, I kind of like Mankey. Um, but yeah, this is Mahogany Town. Um, welcome to the home of the ninja. All right, so Mahogany Town is a really small town. There's not much to do here at all. There's basically a Pokemon Center and a gym. And you can't even go in the gym right now because this buffoon is blocking the way. Um, but he says you should do some sightseeing. Go up north and check out the Lake of Rage right now. Yeah, the Lake of Rage is all the rage in Mahogany Town. 
And if you try to go out east, this guy's gonna stop you. And he says, Hiya, kid. I see you're new in Mahogany Town. Since you're new, you should try a yummy Rage Candy Bar. Right now, give me yours for just 300 bucks. And a Rage Candy Bar is basically a potion. It heals 20 hit points, so whatever. Even if you buy it, he's not gonna let you pass, so it's just a big scam. Um, but yeah, guys, there's not much to do in Mahogany Town, so we might actually just go ahead and go up north to the Lake of Rage, like that guy said. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.